G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here for the sixth part of the Super Mario Bros. In Construct 2 tutorial. So, this is actually my second attempt at doing this video. The first time I uploaded the video, I stuffed it up and I cut off the end. I didn't merge my videos properly and I lost the original footage. So, apologies to those people who have seen the stuffed up one. This is hopefully going to be the correct one with no issues. However, I can't promise you that. So, the first thing that we are going to do today is we are going to get the mushroom and the queens working before we move on to item blocks because that seems like a logical order. So the first thing that we need to do is you need to get the graphics that I've got for you. So, this little items.zip file is down in the description of the video. Please click on it, download that file so you're ready to go. The second thing you're going to need is your graphics folder open. So, I'm going to open my graphics folder and I'm actually going to create a brand new folder here and it's going to be called items all right and that's going to contain all the graphics for my mushroom and my coin so if i double click on the items.zip or you use whatever zip application you have i'm simply going to drag these files inside to the items folder okay with that done we are ready to roll all right the next thing that we need to do is create ourselves a folder under our objects type right click on object type add subfolder items all right and then we're going to add the event sheet already. So we're going to right click on event sheets, the same sort of thing, and click add event sheet, call it items. And before we go too far, we need to add this guy in the event sheet one. So right click anywhere down the bottom, include event sheet, and click OK. All right, now it's time to create some stuff. I'm just going to click on level one so we can see what we're doing. So first of all, right click on the items folder, insert a new object, it's going to be a sprite like everything else bloody is, make it a sprite, call it mushroom, click anywhere to insert it, and let's get the mushroom into our program. So I'm just going to right click down in the animation frames like we've done plenty of times before, import frames, I'm actually going to choose from sprite strip, now there's only one picture in our mushroom, whoops, that's the wrong folder to be honest, that's for the next video, sorry everybody items mushroom but just make sure it says one cell horizontal one cell vertical tick to replace the existing animation and all that's going to do is just replace that original frame he's gone and we can set up the behaviors for our mushroom so let's close in there's no animation there he is he's looking quite pretty in all his former glory let's click behaviors let's click add you're going to what we're going to do is we're going to use the platform behavior for the mushroom because when a mat mushroom um, appears, I suppose, is the word I want to use. He starts moving to the right. As soon as he hits a wall, he starts moving to the left. And so there's a lot of things in play there. There's gravity, there's collisions, and there's movement. So we need a couple of things there, and the platform behavior adds all those things for us. We just need to change a few settings so that the player's not in control and he's got the right speed. So first of all, his max speed's going to be 50. His acceleration's 100. Deceleration, he never stops, so just put zero. Jump strength, 650. Gravity... 500 I found to be quite nice okay and the rest are fine except for default controls go no all right and that means that the player is not going to be in control of the mushroom he's going to move move I should say a little bit slower than most other things but otherwise we're pretty good the last thing to make sure is what layer he's on he should be on the items layer so he appears above blocks and certain other things in the background okay so let's go to our items event sheet and start programming this bad boy because he's not that easy unfortunately because we need to do a few things so first of all I'm going to create a group called mushroom so add group mushroom and this is where all the code for our mushroom is going to lie about moving about Mario picking him up and things like that okay so the first thing that we need to talk about okay is when Mario picks up items or he takes damage like when Mario is growing and shrinking we don't want anything on the screen to move. So mushrooms, enemies, and different things included. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if Mario's active. And if he is, we're going to allow the mushroom to move. If Mario's not active, which means he's either dying or he's being hit or he's growing or shrinking, well, that I've repeated myself, but that's fine, then the mushroom won't move. Okay, And that's really, really easy for us to do. We just need to check if Mario's active first. So click on this group, press S for a sub-event. Let's go to Mario, let's check his boolean variables, and let's check if he is active. Okay, so if Mario is active, we're going to move this mushroom at the set speed. So, click add action next to this, and it's really easy for us to move mushrooms. You just simulate a control, 
and we're going to simulate pressing right because that's the direction that the mushroom travels to begin with. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> and the other thing is the mushroom not moving. So we need to check if Mario is not active. So I'm going to click on the edge of this event. I'm going to press X to get an else there. So if Mario is active, else, we're going to stop the mushroom. And the easiest way to stop the mushroom moving is to... Whoop, I think I can't remember the actual name of it, to be honest. Do, 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 do. Set enabled. Disable the platform. Okay. With the platform disabled, the mushroom can't move. There's no gravity in play, nothing. It will actually disable the mushroom, and it will just be sitting wherever he is at that current time until you re-enable him. So in turn, if the Mario is active, we need to enable the mushroom. So I'm going to add an action underneath my simulate pressing right. And I'm going to re-enable him. And that's just going to be good little practice. You're not going to see much going on except for, where did Mario go? The mushroom moving. And he's pretty good. You can see he's hitting the wall. He's not turning around the other way. So that is what we're going to take control of right now. Okay. And we're going to do a tiny little bit of maths here, people. I know people don't like it, but if you are here for programming, you are here for maths. Now, let's say we've set the maximum speed of the mushroom to 50. Okay. And when we simulate pressing right, what's he doing? He's accelerating towards that number, 50. Now, so let's just say to the right. Hmm, how do I explain this quickly? Okay, so horizontal movement, left and right, is controlled by what's called your vector x. Okay, if you are traveling at 50 on your vector x, that means you're moving 50 pixels to the right. Okay, that's your speed. Now, if we were to flip that, if we were to go negative 50, he'd be moving left automatically. Even though we're simulating to the right, okay, that just means accelerate, basically. If we accelerate in the negative value, we are accelerating to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to be flipping his acceleration between 100 and negative 100. Okay, and this is actually really, really easy to do. Now, we could do... We could check if it's 100, then we can swap it to negative 100. And if it's negative 100, we could swap it to 100. But unfortunately, we need to change the acceleration and the vector x. So there'd be a lot of checking going on, and it's a lot more code than I'm, I like, basically. So let's say his acceleration is 100. If we wanted to get it to negative 100, there's a couple of things that we could do. The easiest mathematical way is to times by negative 1. Whoop, I just minus. So 100 times... And then we type in 1, so 100 times negative 1 equals negative 100. That's pretty straightforward. But the beauty of this little technique is if we times by negative 1 again, it becomes 100. So it literally flips between the positive and negative values that we have. Okay. So what we're going to do is whenever that mushroom hits a wall, goes bang, we're going to swap the acceleration and his vector x to the negative value and he's going to keep start going this way and when he hits this wall we're going to swap him to the positive values and he's going to head the other way and it's literally just going to keep doing this forever for us now there's a lovely little check in the platform behavior to see if there's a wall to the left or the right so what we're going to do is check if the mushroom has a wall to the right so mushroom is by wall right all right and the code for this is a little bit ugly but just bear with me so i'm going to change his acceleration and what's the acceleration going to be? It's going to be his self.platform.acceleration times negative 1, just like I showed you on the calculator. And we're going to do the same thing here, but for his vector x. So I'm going to copy and paste this action here. So copy, paste, double click to edit, go back. We need to find vector x. And I'm simply going to change acceleration to vector x. So now everything says set vector x to vector x. And there's lots of vector x going on there. Okay, so that's going to swap him. Save, run, to go the other direction. Now we just have to do it for the other side. Now we could copy and paste this code, or we can add another condition and then make this an or block. So let's add another condition. Just I'm going to copy and paste that. So now we've got the two conditions. I'm going to change this to the left wall. Okay, so you can see the mushroom is on the wall to the left and has a wall to the right. That's pretty much impossible unless he's jammed inside a hole. So we're going to make this an or block. 
So I'm going to right click here, make all block. So if he has a wall to the left, whoops, wall to the left, or he has a wall to the right. Try it out, make sure it works. Eee. And there we go. And that's just going to keep going forever for us. That's the beauty of that little piece of code because it just flips between the negative and the positive. All right, the final and the easiest piece of code that we're going to do in this video is when Mario picks up the mushroom. So we're going to say if Mario collides with it, and he's a small Mario because you don't want the big Mario becoming a big Mario again, we're again going to call on Mario's grow function because we already wrote that in the last video. So go to items. Let's add a sub-event to the group. Let's say Mario collision with another object, the mushroom. So when Mario collides with the mushroom, but he has to be big. So press C for another condition. Mario Boolean is big. And you don't want, he has to be big. You want invert. So press I, or you can right click and invert. Okay. So collides and is big. Function, if you can spell it, call function grow. And then finally, we want to destroy the mushroom. Otherwise, there's... It's going to look a bit weird. Okay, that's it. Mario's going to collide with the mushroom. If he's small, he grows and it destroys the mushroom. Now, I know you can pick up mushrooms when you're big and you get points, but we haven't implemented points yet, so we're going to talk about that later. Let's just grab the mushroom. Woohoo! Big Mario. All right, we are almost done. We're just going to do coins and we'll finish up there. So I'm going to minimize this code here. Please pause the video if you haven't got it all yet. You know, and let's start adding the sprite for our coins. I go back to level one. Let's right click on items. Insert something new. Sprite. Name. Coin. Bang. Click. Radio. Okay. So let's insert the coin animation. Now there's actually three. <coughs> excuse me. There's three frames here. So we need to do a sprite strip for this one. So we're going to go open. Make sure that says three. Make sure that says one. Tick that box. And then hit two OKs. Oh. Okay, and we're going pretty good. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to quickly, we're going to duplicate this frame here. Because when a coin shines, it stays on the bright stage for a lot longer than it stays on the dark stage. So to get around that, I'm just going to right-click and duplicate the first frame. So there's two of them. Okay, it's just going to look a little bit nicer. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to set the animation speed to 8. And we're going to set it to loop. Alright, and let's just have a look at that result, if it hurries up. Probably a little bit too quick. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're just going to set the animation to ping pong, it's called. So I'm going to double click to edit the sprite. This little setting here, ping pong, what it's going to do is it's going to start on the first frame, it's going to play the animation all the way up to the last frame, and then originally it would go back to the zero and play in that fashion sort of loops from start to finish. Ping pong will go to the end and then it comes back down to the start. Okay, so it goes back and forth and plays all the frames. So let's turn that on and hopefully that looks a little bit nicer. That looks heaps better. Okay, that's the little setting I forgot originally. All right, so we need to do one little thing to Mario's event sheet before we can go into the items and it's going to be really quick. What we need to do is create what's called a global variable. Now, an instance variable applies only to one sprite and only to itself, whereas a global variable applies across the entire project. So you use these sparingly. Okay. The reason I'm creating a global variable for coins is because A, it appears at the top of the screen, so it's always in the game. B, there's only ever one Mario in the game, so you're never going to have more than one set of coins. Okay. Even in the modern games with multiplayer, you've only got one counter for coins. And there's going to be a couple of things that increase your coin values. So you can pick up a coin, or you can hit a block with a coin in it. Okay? So there's a couple of places we need to use it. So thus, it becomes necessary that we use a global variable. Okay? If you don't understand what it is, it's a little, it's a spot where we can put a number that your entire act program can modify. All right? So with that done, just make sure it's a number. Make sure the initial value is zero, because Mario doesn't start with coins unless it's a saved game etc. And then we're ready to go to the item spreadsheet, well spreadsheet, event sheet, create a group, call it coins. Alright, 
and we're going to add a little bit of subcode here. So press S, go to Mario. We're going to check if he collides with the coin. And wait for it. The world's hardest code. Coin. Destroy. And then we're going to add one to our coins variable. And you'll find that under system. Because it's global, there's globals and locals. So let's go add to coins one. So when Mario collides with the coin, destroy the coin and add one to his coin count. Let's add a couple of extra coins in the level. Dodgy as, but anyway. Ching, 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 ching. Look at that. Most of our items are working. Now, to prove to you that this coiner, uh, coin counter is actually working, I'm going to run in debug layout. Now, I've never done this in any of my videos, but down the bottom, we can actually see what's going on in a lot of detail. And if I scroll down, we're in the system tab at the moment, so I'm going to scroll down. There's, whoop, whoa, go away. There's my global variables. You can see coins is already at two because I must have run into some when the game started. Three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. That's the video done for today, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. I would hope to see you in the next video. If you want to like, comment, and subscribe, I'd love to hear from you and yeah, keep you up to date. Next video, we're going to look at item blocks. It's going to take a bit, so please come and join me. I'll see you then, everybody. Ta-ta for now.